From sniping elites on the surface of Installation 04 to the viral theater ricochet clips that we see online, Halo Sniper has been a consistently classy and fun weapon to use in the series. Each iteration of the Sniper had its own unique voice and ambitions, and seeing as the wait for Halo Infinite is going to be a bit longer than expected, it should prove fun to take a walk through the series' history with this long-range beauty. As always, if you find yourself enjoying the video, subscribing and liking the video would be most appreciated, and without further ado, let's begin. Halo Combat Evolved probably sports the most focused sandbox in the series. Weapons tend not to overlap and bleed into each other, and all feature very distinct roles and functions. The sniper rifle is exactly what it says on the tin. Incredible for long-range firefights, and its anti-material rounds make it a great weapon for popping the shields of elites. It sports two different reload animations for the empty and non-empty reloads, as well as a sleek and retro-futuristic scope that has two zoom settings and a night vision goggle. In the campaign, it's introduced to the player in Mission 2 and given to the player from the spawn in the third mission. It has the unusual ability of not alerting enemies when fired despite being, well, loud. It's possible that Bungie intended for this thing to be silent, but felt that it distracted a bit from the presentation of the gun, so they left the gunshots loud but retained the stealth bonus. It's goofy, but when you kind of accept it, it just works. It also has the unique quirk of being very ineffective against Flood. Due to the Flood not needing internal organs to function, the sniper shots simply pass through their bodies, and the Flood barely register the holes now in their guts. It's a cool attention to detail. In multiplayer, what helps the sniper in its role is the very unforgiving aim assist when hip firing and the low bullet magnetism and bullet curve, which makes snapshots relatively hard to pull off. If you're one of the few who can honestly do this and fire from the hip in Combat Evolved, my hat is off to you. That's talent. The Combat Evolved Sniper is probably my favorite iteration of the Sniper in terms of its presence in the game's sandbox. It is THE ranged rifle of the game. Its animations imply a weightiness and power behind the frame. The memories I have of crawling along the cliff sides in the Truth and Reconciliation mission will always stay with me. The green of the sniper scope always provided a nice contrast from the cold grounds of Combat Evolved. This is where our sniper's journey began, and a bright future laid ahead of this little beauty. With the immense success of Combat Evolved, a sequel to the game was all but guaranteed, and with that sequel came a new look and feel for the sniper rifle. The view model is much smaller this time around, betraying the actual size of the weapon, and the melee animations are much lighter and quicker. The alternate reload animation from Combat Evolved was dropped for a new flashy and stylish reload animation that became the new standard reload for the series going forward alongside the Needler's Halo 2 animation. The sound for the reload is also a rather popular stock sound effect for reloading that is still used to this day. It can be most recently heard in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. The sniper lost its green-tinted visor in favor of a more blocky scope with a full video display, which unfortunately makes the sniper a bit blander color-wise. But how does it perform? Halo 2 Sniper is probably the easiest sniper to use out of the Bungie games, according to folks that I've talked to. Its aggressive aim assist makes snapshots easier to pull off, and the boost to bullet magnetism makes it very generous in the kills that it dishes out. A sentiment I've heard voiced is that if it wasn't for the intricacies of Halo 2 combat, such as button combos combined with certain weapons, this sniper could have easily been way too powerful in the sandbox. It fits pretty well in the multiplayer, even if it's a tad on the easy side to use. In campaign, however, the sniper is overshadowed by its sister weapon, the beam rifle, which is found much more commonly and consistently from Jackal snipers. This isn't to say that the sniper rifle is bad, per se, just that its presence has been lost a bit by the focus on precision weapons in Halo 2. What the beam rifle can't take away from it, though, is its style and presentation. Something the next game takes even further, crafting a beautiful tool of destruction.
In 2007, the much-anticipated sequel to Halo 2, Halo 3, was released for the Xbox 360. The game sported a new, highly detailed next-gen model for the classic sniper rifle, ditching the blocky, colorless scope of Halo 2 and returning to the visor-like green display. It sports the same style of animations from Halo 2, albeit smoothened up and polished into something that feels very satisfying. It's rare that a gun's animations garner no complaints from me, but I really can't nitpick this. These are good animations for the sniper. What's made even better is the choice by Bungie to switch it from a hitscan weapon to a projectile weapon. Well, Halo 3's netcode and hit registration is glitchy to say the least, the sniper is one of the more consistent weapons in the game's netcode, made even better by the upcoming hit registration fix that 343 is making for Halo 3 on the Master Chief Collection. It's currently in testing for ODST if you're in the Halo Insider program. One of the Halo community's more well-known competitive players, Vetoed, considers this his personal favorite sniper in the whole series due to the layers of skill and timing that come from leading and timing the shots on top of the comically exaggerated response from player ragdolls when nailed with a headshot. The ragdolls in Halo 3 will respond to the momentum of the sniper shot, so this will send bodies cartwheeling into the distance when you land one right between the eyes. The sound work for the gun also deserves special accommodations. Bungie put a heavy emphasis on the report after the gunshot. The report is the thunderous rumble that will move through the world following the crack of a gunshot. You can hear an enemy sniper across the multiplayer map by the ominous rumble in the air. It's a gun that makes its presence known every time it's fired. In all Halo games, firing a shot at certain angles on certain surfaces can make a shot bounce around corners, but Halo 3's theater mode is what really popularized the metagame of ricochet sniping. You've probably seen those viral clips of a shot bouncing multiple times around a corner before nailing an enemy player in the head. Halo 3 Sniper is only enjoying more of a renaissance with its recent launch on Steam and hit registration improvements being brought by 343. The expanded PC field of view and the freedom of the keyboard and mouse brings a whole new flavor to the Sniper gameplay, and it's exposing this weapon to a whole new crowd of first-person shooter players. Halo 3 is a good iteration of the Sniper for a good reason, and I'm happy to see it thriving even today. While not having a competitive mode of its own, Halo 3 ODST reorganizes and modifies the existing Halo 3 sandbox and combat loop to create something new, trying to reinforce the idea of the player being a small and fragile ODST. With the removal of the universally pretty great battle rifle came more room for individual precision weapons to shine and serve their purpose, and man, the ODST sniper shines! Not only does it retain the incredible animation and presentation of the Halo 3 Sniper, it gives the gun a beefy boost in damage which leads to it feeling much more like a long-range anti-material sniper rifle. Combining the larger environments of ODST with the lack of shields on the player and the overall reduction in beam rifle frequency births one of my favorite versions of the campaign sniper rifle. ODST is such a great game, and I love this version of the Sniper. In the 2010s, modern military shooters really became the huge popular thing, and some of that is even reflected in Halo Reach, Bungie's final Halo game. It takes the aesthetic of Halo and smears it in a rugged, modern warfare style aesthetic. The Sniper of Reach sports a very much modern military-inspired tactical design, giving it the appearance of a highly customizable piece of military hardware. Like most guns in Reach, alternative reloads make a return, with the Reach Sniper featuring the classic Halo 2 reload animation for non-empty reloads, and a spiritual remake of the empty Combat Evolved animation for the full reloads. 
The weapon's damage was brought down from ODST, and the projectile shots were switched out for hitscan, albeit with less bullet magnetism and aim assist than Halo 2. What does make the Reach sniper rifle quite unique, however, is how Bungie approached vehicle damage. Vehicles have more dedicated weak points on them, and the sniper's anti-material rounds make it an excellent vehicle-clearing weapon. When a Spartan laser isn't present, the sniper is just perfect and makes enemy vehicles vulnerable or just destroys them outright. For more serious competitive folk, this sniper rifle was seen as a bit of a letdown coming off of the Halo 3 sniper, but it's a take on the sniper that is enjoyed by most folks and whose model would go on to be used in the remakes of Combat Evolved and Halo 2. Despite being a direct sequel to Halo 3, Halo 4 functions more as a sequel to Halo Reach. Halo 4 takes the same general silhouette of the Reach sniper rifle, but redesigns it in a style that's more indicative of the Western style of military science fiction that was prevalent in games during the early 2010s. A lot of the tech was redone to look less modern, and the colors were brightened up to give it a much more futuristic vibe, and the scope was enlarged and replaced with a sterile blue color. During development, the scope had this weird wire on it, but this was removed for unknown reasons. The animation work, though, is quite nice for this gun. It retains the animations of Reach, but it beefs up the weight and the shifting of the gun in the player's hands. The sound was also changed to something much sharper and more aggressive, which fit in line with 343's approach to sound design. Someone I spoke to in the industry identified a clear difference in how the new developer 343 approached the sniper's sound. Bungie had a focus on the independent transients, while the 343 games have a much more aggressive just smear across the sound's body, with everything highly compressed together, which gives the sniper shot a more sudden and aggressive tone, but it sounds much less organic than the sounds of the Bungie games. How does it perform, though? In Halo 4, power weapons are treated more like killstreaks in Call of Duty. After getting a certain amount of kills, the player can call in ordnance drops that grant incredibly easy-to-use power weapons, and this sniper rifle fits the bill. A killstreak really is the best way it can be described. The hit registration is the most generous it's ever been in the series, the aim assist makes it very easy to land snapshots from the hip, and the lack of descoping means it's very hard to miss your shots when you're scoping in on an enemy. This reframing of the sniper and its unusually large view model that takes up one-fourth of the screen leads to the Halo 4 sniper rifle being looked down upon as a fundamental misunderstanding of the sniper's role in the sandbox. It's a very easy weapon to use, which makes it a bit less memorable since there is less skill to master. It's by no means bad, it's just maybe not the direction the sniper should have gone in. In the remake of Combat Evolved, the Reach Sniper was chosen as the updated model for the classic CE sniper rifle, which is a bit odd since the Halo 3 model lines up a bit more cleanly with the classic model. The CEA model features updated textures and sounds, but the animations of the original Combat Evolved, which unfortunately don't quite line up with this Reach model. It stretches Chief's hand in this really awkward way when holding it, and when reloading, his hand doesn't actually touch the bolt when cycling it. In Halo 2 Anniversary's campaign, however, the animations line up much more cleanly with this model. It also sports a completely reimagined sound that is incredibly boomy and rumbly. The same sound can be heard in the multiplayer version for Halo 2 Anniversary. During the development of the multiplayer for Halo 2 Anniversary, it used the Halo 4 model as a placeholder before being swapped out for the Reach model in the final release. Due to Halo 2 Anniversary's multiplayer engine being a slightly tweaked version of the Halo 4 engine, this game has a lot of guns that feel closer to their Halo 4 incarnations than they do the Halo 2 ones, and this sniper is a prime example. It retains the generous aim assist and bullet magnetism, but what keeps it from being frowned upon like the Halo 4 sniper 
however, is the much more pleasing sound effect for gunshots and the return of the descope mechanic. It's not the best version of the Halo Sniper, but I absolutely understand why so many people are fans of it. Its style can't be denied, and it's just fun to use. Three Four Three's second game, Halo 5 Guardians, made it a point to correct many of the issues found in Halo 4. Its success in this goal is debatable, but Halo 5 featured a new version of the sniper that is much more in line with what came before. It does still sport the Halo 4 design, albeit with a much smaller view model and a new sound that unfortunately isn't that great, especially coming off the back of Halo 2 Anniversary. Something sounds wrong with the Halo 5 sniper sound. Maybe it's the engine just compressing it in a weird way, but it sounds less like a gunshot and more like a piece of machinery banging against something. It's a very inorganic and hard on the ears sound. Mechanically, the game treats the sniper rifle as a heavy weapon, meaning that it has the slowest time to fire out of sprint. And due to 343 removing the scope system from past Halo games and introducing an aiming down the sight system, the view model also now needs to physically be raised to meet the player's eyes, which means this sniper also feels much more sluggish to use than previous incarnations. Double tapping YY to speed up the reloads or fall out of scope is not advisable, as the swap animation will need to be completed, and then the aiming down the sights animation will need to play out before you can use the scope. When speaking to Shyway about the Halo 5 sniper, this is an issue he took with it, and most guns in general in Halo 5 thanks to the way aiming down the sights changes scoping. On one hand, he could see it argued as a layer of skill for the gun, but he finds this makes everything feel less snappy than previous games. Halo 5 also borrowed some other ideas from popular shooters, such as the scope glint when aiming down the sights. This is used in games like Destiny and Battlefield to inform the player when a sniper is taking aim at them. The gun also retains the high bullet magnetism and aim assist from Halo 4, although due to Halo 5's enhanced mobility, the unpredictable nature of player movements makes landing shots much harder than the Halo 4 sniper rifle. A strange oddity in the sniper's sprint animation I notice is that when looking up at the sky and sprinting with it, your view will start to bob left and right. This is an animation only shared with the plasma pistol and no other guns. I noticed it about a week into Halo 5's launch and have never been able to find an explanation for it. Like most guns in Halo 5, it comes with a few rec variants that can be found in the loot boxes, the campaign, or spawned using the Forge tool for custom games. Why don't we go through them? The first variant is the end of the line. It's a sniper that features a faster fire rate but less damage overall. The next variant is the Arrow of Time. It features an extended magazine, but most importantly, has no D-scope. That means that this weapon is the closest to the Halo 4 incarnation of the sniper rifle in Halo 5. And finally, the most important variant of all is the Nornfang sniper rifle. The personal weapon of the legendary crack shot, Spartan Linda, it has two different variants that can be found in the game. In multiplayer, the Norn Fang gives the player a permanent damage boost, features explosive rounds that stack up with Halo 5's bullet curve, and allows for the use of the radar when aiming down the sights, making this a great weapon for killing sprees. In the campaign, it can be found in the mission Unearthed and is seen abandoned by Linda in Blue Team's Stolen Prowler. This version of the Nornfang has none of the traits of its multiplayer counterpart and only features the cartoonish coloring. It's a cool hidden weapon, nonetheless. The sniper rifle has had a long and interesting journey, with multiple interesting incarnations of itself. With Halo Infinite returning us to a more classic aesthetic, even if not a classic gameplay style, how do you think it's going to be treated in the game? Which is your favorite version of the sniper, and what should I cover next? Feel free to check out the Late Night Gaming subreddit to continue the discussion with the community, and with that being said, I'll see you guys on the next video.